Well, that's a big question. What's next, right? As we await a decision on the fate of health care from the Supreme Court, my next guest is fighting to overturn the president's law in Congress, saying it should be replaced with a plan that can actually help patients. Wyoming Senator John Barrasso is a chairman of the Senate Republican Policy Committee, also a doctor, right, Senator? We can't forget that. Uh Absolutely. Practiced, uh, took care of a lot of families all around Wyoming for about a quarter of a century. Jenna, and thanks for having me today. It's nice to have you. You know, while the Supreme Court is, well, figuring out what they're going to do here, before we actually find out their decision on this case, the health care law is being uh, implemented in different ways. It's being prepared. Foundation is being set up around the country to, uh, to make sure that different businesses and institutions follow the new law. So that's happening. Is there any part of the law that that you think is a good idea that you'd like to save because listen if we're, we've spent a couple of years setting up the foundation for certain parts of it do we want to do away with everything is there any part of it that you like well, well jenna i think that the, the supreme court ought to repeal the entire law uh, if they do not find the whole thing unconstitutional i want to work to repeal it and then replace it with a step-by-step -step approach to actually make sure patients can get the care that they need from the doctor that they choose, not that the government chooses, at a lower cost. The president made so many promises, all of which have been broken by this health care law. And what you're not going to see coming from me or from Republicans is a 2,700-page law that is, as they say, too voluminous to be read and too incoherent to be understood. But, but different parts of it, though, for example, of making your, your children, being able to stay on your insurance up until the age of 26, is that something that, that you'd like to save as part of the law, that, that some insurance companies have already uh, made allowances to happen? Well, that's something that, that, that I and other Republicans have supported from the beginning, and it should have been in an initial cooperative effort by Republicans and Democrats to actually lower the cost of health care, allow more people to be covered, and that's an important part of what we need to do in, in the future. But I think we actually have to repeal this entire complicated, very expensive health care law that was put together with accounting gimmicks and budget tricks and many empty promises to make sure that we can really focus on a patient-centered approach to health care, not a government-centered or an insurance company-centered program. What we need is people that things are actually going to be good for patients, as well as for the providers who take care of them, as well as for the taxpayers. And we don't have that with this well, health care law. And let's be more specific on that as well. As If we were to, if Congress were to succeed in, in repealing the entire law, uh, what kind of timeline do you foresee? To, to achieving that and actually implementing some cost-saving, cost-benefits uh, to the American taxpayer? Well, and if, if the Supreme Court completely strikes down the entire law uh, later this month, I think we need to focus on things that put patients in charge so that they actually have their own insurance policies that they own. If they buy them personally, they should get the same tax breaks as the, company, as the companies who get tax breaks. I think if, uh, th that we ought to allow people to buy insurance across state lines. We have to get rid of the junk lawsuits that drive up the cost of care and cause so much of, uh, of the defensive medicine that's, that's being practiced. And actually let individuals who want to take positive directions with their own health care, let them make decisions that will lower the cost of their insurance as, as well. So there's so many things we can do that are really patient-centered, not government-centered. Senator, let me ask you about one of those points that you just brought up, which is uh, having Americans being able to shop across different state lines for their health care. A, a, large, a large part of this health care debate has been the power of the state versus the power of the federal government, the power of the individual. And I'm wondering if you would be for the federal government actually mandating to states that they'd have to open up uh, their marketplaces to other states. Is that a slippery slope with having the federal government mandate that to the states? And is that something that you would be for? You know, I, I always have concerns about Washington mandating things to states. For the most part, they tend to be uh, very expensive on the states, which is what they're done with the health care law, mandating all of these new people being thrown onto the Medicaid rules. But we're seeing it right now with colleges. A major story today said that so many colleges that used to offer low-cost uh, health care plans for their students are dropping those because under the Obama health care law and the mandates, the mandates coming out of Washington are going to drive up the cost so much that these colleges are saying, forget it, we're not going to offer insurance anymore for our students. Senator, a lot to this conversation. We look forward to having you back more to, to talk more about it as we await the decision for the Supreme Court. Senator Barrasso, nice to have you again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jenna. Great to see you. Thank you.